entire sound, Sakuraya, and I'm going to pass it round. Sure, what sound did you hear? Heel. Yeah. Let's try again. Let's see where the sounds went. Let's see. One of the key principles within the Hillmead Way is a Hillmead curriculum for Hillmead children. Yes, we recognize the importance of teaching those key skills, such as phonics, but what that principle means is that we teach those skills discreetly within a curriculum that we have planned and developed ourselves so that whilst the children are acquiring those key skills, we are not losing their love of books and of language. When I say go, you're gonna find the person who has the word to match your picture. Okay, and you just sit next to them. Okay, so be practicing your sounds when you've got it. There are very high achieving children and there are some that are still learning their letter sounds. So um, I try and keep it quite active so that I can engage the children that don't necessarily know their sounds yet as well as keep the children that already know them quite interested and excited to do the lessons. Can everyone start sounding out their word or picture? <laughs> Getting them to walk around, they seem to think it's amazing, even though they were just walking around the classroom that they were in every day. Finding their partner means that they're having to listen to other children as well as make the sound themselves. And some of them were recognising the word immediately, whereas others were actually having to listen to the sound and looking at what their partner had done. Look, look, look. Show us. Show us your picture. Can you act it out? Everyone look at someone else. You might be looking like this, or you might be looking with a telescope. I do always tend to do shared writing with year two before I send them off to write anything, just so that the children that need to see how we write, literally forming the letters, see that. I will expect capital letters and full stops and finger spaces, even though it's not a lesson specifically about writing a long piece. Um, so it's to keep the continuity between all of the lessons, that those are the expectations for all of your writing. Someone give me another silly sentence with at least two of those pictures in it. The hook gives the bee a sheep. The hook gives the bee a sheep. Can a hook give a bee a sheep? No. No, it can't. So let's write that sentence. The silly sentence activity is done in quite a few steps for the children. So on the table I had um, the same pictures that we'd been using on the carpet. The, the queen gave the foot to the, the god. The queen gave the foot to the god. So which ones are you talking about? Show me a queen. This. Fantastic. And what's the other one that you're going to need? A foot. The pictures are mainly for the children who are slightly lower ability, um, just as a prompt, and also that they can actually choose something. They find writing quite difficult, but the choosing of the two things that they want to include gives them a break from writing and lets them focus on something a bit more active. I'd expect the slightly more able children to not rely so heavily on the pictures that were in the middle of the table. The teeth gave the queen a looker. The teeth gave the queen a looker. Goodness me, what's and the next the one? And the feet used the looker to clean the hook. Not bad. What I don't set my children at tables. They're all at mixed ability tables. I think it's important that the children who are slightly lower ability are exposed to um, a higher quality of talk, which I don't think comes when you've got a group of children who are all low ability sitting on one table with an adult leading the talk. In terms of the more able children, they also quite enjoy helping out some of the other children, which consolidates what they know. E. I would say the differentiation is in terms of outcome rather than me specifically gearing the work towards a child's level. In my Guess the Picture activity, that works for me in two ways, in that it consolidates words that have the sound so they can visually represent it. So for the lower ability, that's great because they can draw queens, they can draw things that they can't necessarily spell. In terms of getting them to describe what they've drawn, that is more for the more able, actually. Chardonnay had drawn a picture of a cook and in her description, she went beyond what we'd said as a, as a group on the carpet that they cook. He has a hat and, he, and it's white. She was describing features of his clothing, like the very smart white jacket and the fact that he'd be holding a bowl. Does he use anything? He used, he used a bowl.
She was bringing in her own experiences um, from home and sharing those with Chanel, um, which means that Chanel will now go away with a better understanding of what a cook might be. Cook, good, well done, swap over. At the very end of the session, I wanted to hear words from the children that they'd worked out had the E sound or the U sound. The children who weren't too sure could fall back on what we'd done in class and just use those words. And the ones who had gone off to their tables and really thought about it were able to have the opportunity to show off. I think it's important for all children to be able to say their best bit and to have some element of success. Tree. Good girl. What word is that? Three minutes. Sh e. Sh e. Fantastic. Line up. Good. What word was that? Good. 